We were looking today at the slope of a tangent line and the instantaneous rate of change. We had this graph, as you can see in the illustration here, labeled as f of x equals root x. We created a table of values and what we got down to with our table of values is the ordered pair, uh, we had one, one, and then we had one, and when you substitute in 1.1 into the square root, right? So that was one of the last bullets in our table of values. When you calculate the slope of the secant through these two points, what you ended up with, or what you should have ended up with, uh, using y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 is an answer that's approximately 0 0.488. Hopefully that's what you got. Um, what we should have recognized is that, you know, our first point was way over here, I think, at uh, when x equals 9. And I asked you to draw a secant line through those two points. Okay, this isn't going to be too pretty on here, but you get the idea. So there's the secant line through 1, 9. You can see that it has a fairly gentle slope. You calculated that slope already to be 0 0.25. And then I got you to choose lines um, that had points at 5, for instance. And when you graph that secant line, you get a slope as well. I didn't calculate that one. And then I got you to choose a point at x equals 2, which is even closer to 1. And what you notice about each of these secant lines is that the slope increases. As you get closer to 1, the slope increases. The last point that I got you to graph, and it's hard to see, but, you know, is 1.1. So it's very, very close to the x equals 1 point. When you graph your secant line, that secant line basically is just imitating a tangent line. If you haven't looked up the definition of a tangent line, then maybe that's something that we should do right off the bat. A tangent line is a line that intersects the curve in one spot. Okay. Here we have this red line it's intersecting our curve in two spots at x equals 1 and x equals 1.1. And we found the slope of this red line to be approximately 0 0.488. We could pick a point even closer. You can see I'm putting a little blue dot there over top of x equals 1. Maybe if we picked a point even closer to 1, let's say we're going to use the points 1, 1 and um, 1.001. The y coordinate would be the square root of 1.001. Oh, I just noticed that I made a mistake up here. This would have been the point 1.1 up here. Sorry, I'm putting that in blue up, up top there the x-coordinate above. Anyway, let's look at the blue ink that I just wrote down. 1, 1 and 1.001 and square root of 1.001. And I ask you to find the slope of the secant line through those two points. So you'd be finding y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And what you would get if you calculated that slope, I've already done it, it's 0 0.49987, etc. Or approximately, what we're getting closer and closer to, obviously, is 0 0.5. So these two numbers are actually fairly close together, aren't they? 0 0.488 and 0 0.499, they're pretty close together. 
my point is, as we get closer and closer and closer to the value of 1, we chose 9 to begin with, and we got a slope of 0 0.25. Then we chose 5, and we got another slope. You can see that it was actually a little steeper than 0 0.25, right? Then we pick 2. It's going to have a slope that's steeper than the previous one, but still not the same slope as the red line. And as we pick points closer and closer to 1, we're imitating the slope of that red line. And really the slope of the red line looks like the slope of the tangent, which I have as approximately 0 0.5. That's the slope of that red line. The slope of the red line is 0 0.5, but we already said that the slope of the, the secant line going through 1, 1, and 1.1 1 .1 and root 1.1 1 .1 is approximately 0 0.5. We also said that the slope of the secant going through 1, 1, and 1.001 is approximately 0 0.5. So by picking points that are very, very close to each other, at our point of tangency, we can approximate the slope of the tangent. Okay, so the slope of the tangent line at x equals 1, that was the last question on our page, is approximately 0 0.5. If you read briefly uh, the section in your textbook that it's on page 66. So on page 66 of your textbook, talks to you about uh, the relationship between the slope of secants and the slope of a tangent. Pause the video now and go and look at that page. I'm going to read it through here as well. As a point Q becomes very close to a tangent point P, the slope of the secant line becomes closer to or approaches the slope of the tangent line. So like in our video, we have this curve here. And if, if this is our point of tangency, P, and our tangent line is this, we want to know the slope of that tangent line. We can approximate the slope of that tangent line by finding a, a point somewhere down here, like Q. Okay, The slope of this secant line, well, that's... Well, I'm not really even close, I guess, when you look at the two. This slope is going to be, uh, the blue line will have a slope of, you know, let's say 1, where the slope of the black line is 2, right? But what if I move the point Q closer to P? And I call this Q1. Now, if I move point Q closer to P, you can see that if I draw a secant line through those two points now, the slope of the blue line that I just graphed is actually closer to the slope of the black line, which is our tangent line. And what happens if I move point Q closer to P, like it's right beside it, I call it Q2. When I draw my secant line now, I'm basically just drawing over top of my black line, and therefore the slope of my secant line imitates it. It imitates the slope of the black line, which is my tangent. Second paragraph, often an arrow is used to denote the word approaches. So the above statement can be written as follows. Okay, uh, As Q approaches P, the slope of the secant PQ, slope of the secant PQ approaches the slope of the tangent. at P. I just didn't use as many words, I just used symbols, right? So we see MS, meaning the slope of the secant line of PQ, approaches the slope of the tangent 
at point P. And the last sentence, the, thus the average rate of change between P and Q becomes closer to the value of the instantaneous rate of change at P. So on the graph that I just drew, all of these blue lines that I, I have here, okay, all of these blue lines are slopes of secant lines, right? We call the slopes of secant lines, I'll write it over here, the slope of a secant line is actually referring to, I shouldn't use an arrow because that looks like it's approaching. Uh, the slope of a secant line is, is average rate of change. This pen is not writing very well today. The slope of a tangent, oh my goodness. The slope of a tangent line is referring to the instantaneous rate of change. Average is referring to the rate of change between two points. Instantaneous is referring to the rate of change at an instant of time or at a single point. So lastly, what I want you to do is turn in your textbook to page 72 and I want to highlight a particular question just to give you a little idea of what we're trying to head towards. Page 72, number 7. The soccer ball is kicked into the air such that its height, h, and meters after t seconds can be modeled by this function. So you have a function in terms of height and time. Negative 4.9 t squared. As you can see, determine the average rate of change. So in the first question, we're looking for the average rate of change. of the height of the ball from one second to three seconds. So you can see in this particular problem, we're looking at average and it's between two points. It's like it's giving us two X coordinates because we're refer re we are referring to time, right? We're trying to find the Y coordinates, which would be the height. So you'd have to substitute one second into this function wherever you see a T you're going to substitute in a 1, get the corresponding height variable. Then you're going to substitute 3 seconds into time, get a corresponding height variable, and then there's your y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. We already have our x1 and y1, sorry, our x2 and x1. So on the denominator, our x2 minus x1 is already given to us. What we don't know is our y2 minus our y1, which we know is height in this particular problem. So we have to calculate that first before we find the average rate of change. Well, in question B, it's actually asking for the instantaneous rate of change, and that is at or after one second. So now we have one instant of time, not two, so we have to find an instantaneous rate of change. The only way to find an instantaneous rate of change without using calculus, because that's what that course is all about, is to use two points that are infinitely close to each other or very close to each other, like we did with the problem f of x equals root x in our investigation. So what we're going to do, we're going to make basically the same equation above because we have to have y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Well, we already have our x1. What we need is an x2. So we're going between one second and let's say 1.001 second. Okay. Now we're talking about a, a length of time that's very, very close to each other. And like our problem above in the top left corner, we mimicked the instantaneous rate of change, the slope of the tangent, by finding the slope of a secant between two points that were very close to each other. So what we would have to do then to, to find the rest is to substitute 1.001 into h to find the y2, and then substitute 1 into h to find the uh, y1. 
Okay, so there's our instantaneous rate of change, and that's basically what we have to do. Now the textbook wants you to go through quite a few of these calculations. It wants you to substitute in, you know, a point like three seconds, like in the first example. Then it wants you to substitute in two seconds, and then it wants you to substitute in 1.5 and 1.1 and then 1.001. And then you can see how that whole idea of approaching, like we did over here with the Q approaching P, etc. We can see how that, how our slope of our secant approaches the slope of the tangent line. But really, this just does the job with a lot less calculation. So I don't mind just jumping to the step as long as you, you get the gist of what we're trying to do.